Hello everyone. This is my opportunity and pleasure and honor to introduce to you one of the people I admire most. Dr. Mark Jenkins is uh, one of the best scientists I've ever met. Uh, he leads our Center for Immunology. He is a Regents Professor at this university, which is the highest honor any scientist, any faculty can get at this university. He's a member of the National Academy that is one of the highest awards, recognitions you can get nationally for science. And uh, he has done some incredibly good work on adaptive immune system. And I'd like to ask him today to walk us through what is happening in the vaccines, in the world of vaccines of, uh, related to COVID-19. And uh, especially at this time, it is relevant because we are seeing daily how important is confidence in science. And we are seeing what we have known all along for about a hundred of years, that vaccine, any vaccine for infectious disorder is the best de biodefense and perhaps the safest medicine that we have. Dr. Jenkins. Thank you, Dean Tolar, for those uh, kind words. Thank that means a lot to me, thank you. So. Maybe I could start by just you know, reminding everybody what vaccines are and how they work. There's basically three kinds of vaccines and, and, and we'll, keep, we'll keep limit our discussion to viruses because of course we're all concerned about COVID-19. So the three kinds of vaccines are, one would be a dead version of the virus. So take the virus and kill it with a chemical or, or radiation. So this would be like the Salk uh, polio vaccine. The other kind of vaccine would be a weakened virus or an attenuated form of the virus that can replicate in the host but can't cause disease. So the Sabin polio vaccine would be a vaccine like that. And then the third kind of vaccine is kind of lumped into this category of, the, of a subunit vaccine. So this is where part of the virus, a single viral protein or a couple viral proteins or pieces are used to vaccinate the host. So for SARS-CoV-2 infection, all these things are being tried in many, many, many labs across the country. And here, here at the University, University of Minnesota, of course, we have investigators who are involved uh, in that kind of work. So uh, Dr. Hin Lee in the vet school is using his Pachini virus uh, platform to express uh, SARS-CoV-2 proteins, so a version of a subunit vaccine. And he's going to focus on proteins that are not the, um, not the spike protein that a lot of people are focusing on, but more internal proteins um, that are more conserved and might be uh, good vaccine targets. So Jeff Hart and uh, Marco Prabatoni uh, are also working on a, a vaccine that would be uh, targeted toward making uh, antibodies. And then uh, Dave Massapus, Ryan Langlois and I are working on a vaccine uh, that's based on T lymphocytes, not antibodies. So those are three of the things that are going on here at the U of M. What do you uh, think about uh, mucosal uh, immunity, about uh, uh, mucosal vaccine, about uh, how we can uh, use some of the knowledge that we have gained, you know, from, uh, again, polio would be one of the vaccines, you know, that then have that capacity. Um, yeah, so, uh, of course, this is a mucosal pathogen. Uh, SARS-CoV-2 is inhaled, and so is, is you know it enters the body through mucosal surface. And there's been lots of research uh, in the immunology field that focuses on very very special aspects of mucosal immunity. For instance, the um, IgA antibodies are especially concentrated at mucosal surfaces, and so antibody or vaccine regimens that were good at inducing IgA would make a lot of sense here. Now, having said that, um, IgG antibodies can also enter mucosal surfaces, uh, but about at a, a tenth of the efficiency of IgA. So a vaccine that generates an enormous amount of IgG will, in theory, also produce um, a high antibody concentration at the mucosal surfaces. And frankly, uh, immunologists are a lot better at inducing IgG than they are at inducing IgA. And so I think that's where most of the effort um, is going to go. Yeah. 
That's so cool. So since you've mentioned antibodies and since you are the expert in the antibodies, uh, tell us about your uh, path, you know, with the COVID-19 antibody development test. Well, my, you know, my, uh, my part of that path was very early on recognizing that antibody tests were probably going to be an important um, tool here in, in the pandemic and that having a local capacity to test for antibodies was gonna be important because of supply chain bottlenecks. And so, and, and I also knew that Fang Li, uh, vet school researcher, had, um, was working with SARS-CoV-2 and had, had produced in recombinant purified form large amounts of the spike protein. And I knew that could be the basis for a good antibody test. And so that, I. People in my lab, Kathy Pape and, uh, and other people in Center for Immunology developed this antibody test. And then we worked with Amy Carger and her folks in the, uh, in the Advanced Research and Diag Diagnostic Lab to uh, move the test into their shop. They validated the test and now they're performing that test routinely uh, you know, in, their, in their laboratory. And um, you know, so they've tested you know, thousands of people and uh, what they found is about 5% of people they've tested in, in Minnesota have antibodies. And so 95% of us don't. So I think it still makes sense to uh, use social distancing because um, uh, we, most of us don't have any immunity. Thank you, Dr. Jenkins. Thank you for speaking with me today. My pleasure.